Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Smith. This is a Survivor Weekend check-in video, and uh, this is for all my Survivor friends out here. You know, it's a it's a tough road, it's a tough walk, um, it's uh, it's not an easy walk, it's not an easy journey. I do these videos just for a bit of uh, encouragement for survivors of abuse of any type. It doesn't have to be child abuse, and uh, just to sort of check in with you, you know give you a word of encouragement to keep going. Don't give up on your healing journey. Don't give up on yourself. Keep looking for help, you know. Um, so many people, so many survivors of abuse don't have validation. You know, they live in, still possibly living with their abuser family members, you know, and in a family that's full of denial, in a world that's full of denial, with people, friends of the family, you never know. Um, who, you know, still hanging around, who just absolutely deny, you know, and try to get you to deny what you know to be true <clears throat> about the abuse. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it can be very discouraging. And what I say to all these survivors out here, you know, They weren't there, so how would they know? For all, for all the people that, you know, would like for abuse survivors to just go crawl under a carpet somewhere and just die, or just go into a corner and stay there and shut up. You know, that's why I keep speaking out. That's why I keep doing this. This is why, this is what motivates my every day to, you know, get out and speak about this stuff. Um, I do it online because I can reach a lot more people that way than I can in a crowd in my city somewhere. And so, you know, it's 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 absolutely unbelievable the amount of denial that's out there. And I run into it all the time, um, just dealing with other survivors. I know their stories. I know what they're going through. And I hear, you know, many times survivors will tell me, you know, about something that's going on in their life where, you know, they're not believed stories not believed who would believe them right and it's a it's a tough road it's a tough walk I myself have validation because there were several instances where the the uh, abuse was witnessed and also uh, by outsiders as well as the aftermath of the abuse was witnessed by outsider people and my parents were brought up on abuse charges child abuse charges so you know yeah, the, the evidence is there um, not only that, but I have medical records to back my stuff up. So, but so many people don't, don't have that. So see, when I have somebody come to me and tell me, oh, but we just loved your mom and we just loved your dad, you know, are you sure you just didn't, you're just perceiving things wrong and that, you know, maybe you just told yourself this stuff over and over and over again and now you believe it? I just tell them bye-bye. God is my witness. Even if I didn't have other witnesses, which I do, several actually, <clears throat> different people, different different adult witnesses who could verify my story. The issue is, is my story is verifiable. That's what I said a long, long time ago, but you'd have to go back and watch all of my videos, and I've done like 1,100 and... Oh, 1,100 and something audios, as well as so many hours worth of video. So, you know, a person just doesn't always, hasn't catched, you know, hasn't had the opportunity, which is, you know, really, I mean, just, it's up to you if you want to listen to my stuff or not. Um, I put out a lot of stuff, and I've talked about this so many times already, I don't mention it on every show, that, that the records are there. <laughs> you know, the gynecology report is there. And that my brother did rape me when I was a child. And the damage done caused me to be barren for the rest of my life. No children for me. No. So, you know, and a lifetime of hell and, and misery. Um, but, you know, the abuse that my mom inflicted on me was horrific. And my dad as well. And I'm just really thankful that I have validation. Because I can't imagine what it would be like to be a survivor of abuse who survived the abuse and wasn't didn't die from it or wasn't killed killed by it to have to 
wake up every day knowing that there's no validation, there's no way to back it up. And you've got and, and people around them saying, Oh, it must it, it you must have been dreaming. Oh, you just making this up, you know. This is so incredibly wrong. It's not even funny. And people that support abusers, shame on you. God God will deal with you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> I'm happy. You know what I mean? God's a judge, and he will judge, and he will judge righteously. Praise God. You know, No one's getting away with anything. So, survivors out there, rest assured, maybe in this lifetime they got away with it, but they won't get away with it forever, because the ultimate judge will judge. You know, what happened to us never should have happened. No. And anybody thinks it's okay to do these things to children, whether... Whether it's physical abuse, verbal abuse, you know, emotional, psychological abuse, spiritual abuse, sexual abuse. It is so incredibly wrong. It never should have happened. We did not deserve to be treated like that. By anyone. So even if it wasn't a parent and it was somebody else that got a hold of you, you know. So, you know, it's just, no, it shouldn't have happened. But it did. And we have to find something within us, within ourselves, that says, I'm not going to let that destroy the rest of what's left of me. It's taken me way too long and way too hard of a fight to get where I am today to let naysayers and my past abuse destroy me. No. And for all those people that just want to be in denial, you can't help that. You can't change those people, right? Um, it wouldn't matter if you had, if they had a police report right in front of them. They still like the abuser, and that's a real problem for people, especially like myself, who my parents were very manipulative. They had lots of friends, lots of support. Uh, everybody knew they had marital problems, and they were busted on child abuse charges. Not everybody, but a lot of people did. <laughs> And they, they could see the bruises on me and the welts and the marks and the scratches. And some of these adults that would talk to me when I was a little kid would be like, is your mom beating on you again? And I'd be like, yes. So they'd be like, well, you need to be a, you need to be a good girl so she'll, she'll, she'll stop beating on you. I wasn't doing anything wrong. You know? And then when I was sexually abused by my brother, who was 21 years old, and I'm 8 years old. He was like 21, 22, right in there somewhere. And my mom tells me, that's not my problem, that's your problem. You deal with it. How the hell am I supposed to deal with it? You know? I was 8 years old, you know? Horrific. And... For all these people out there that support abusers and think that that's okay, God's going to have a word with you at some point. And you better get your heart right. Because people don't make up these stories. The amount of people that actually fabricate abuse stories is so small compared to the actual reality of what's happening out here. People don't go around making this shit up. As a matter of fact, I spent my whole teen years actually trying to hide from it because I didn't want people to know that I was being abused. And I didn't tell people, I didn't run around telling everybody, oh, my brother raped me. Are you kidding me? The shame and the disgust and the disgrace and also just being abused by both my parents kept me silent. That secret died with my mom. My mom was the only one that knew about it other than me and my brother who who did the deed and raped me for about a year until my mom shipped him up to Calgary, Canada. So, you know, my main message is for survivors out here, you know, do not give up. No, because abusers, you know, they do what they do and they get away with it, most likely. Very rarely are they prosecuted. Um, and then you've got abuse abuser supporters, people that love to support abusers. My people love my mom. 
<laughs> she made a great, <clears throat> she was a good cook. And she made wonderful potato salad. And she was so much fun in the backyard parties. And everybody just loved her. And she was real sweet and nice to people. But she wasn't nice to me. <laughs> and my dad, he was a real nice man. I mean, everybody just loved him. He's a Christian. He's a good man. You know? Well, they didn't really know that he was raping his wife, all beating her and raping her at night. We all knew that at home because we were all trying to protect my mother. But they knew there was something going on between my parents. They knew there was problems. And my dad and mom both had been arrested on child abuse charges, not convicted, arrested and charged with child abuse and allowed to keep us in the home. 1967, right in there somewhere. So 68, right in there somewhere. Nobody cares about the kids. Oh, hell no. My dad beat my brother, my oldest brother, who's 16 years older than me. He's, uh, he's the oldest male in the family. Um, first was my sister Irene, who's 18 years older than me, then my brother Kevin. When they were little, my dad was abusing them. He abused all of his children, including me. Isn't that real sweet? What a nice man. He had so many friends. And they're just horrified that I would come out and talk about this stuff. I don't care. I don't care. Tough shit. That's what I got to say to you. For backing an abuser man who beat and tortured his children and raped his wife, slapped her around, called her names, caused her to go insane pretty well. You know, and for all those people that supported my mom, I'm not saying people shouldn't love my parents. We loved our parents, believe it or not. I think some of us hated our parents at different times. Anyway, my, back to the story. My oldest brother, when he was just a little guy, my dad had, uh, I didn't know this until I found out from him when I moved to Canada, and we were talking about the abuse. And he said, yeah, he said that, that, that our dad had beaten him in the head when he was just like, just a little guy, like, probably like, I don't know how old he was, he was six, seven years old or something, five, six, seven years old, somewhere in there. And uh, hit him and beat him in the head. I don't know, he was older than a toddler, I think. Um, with an encyclopedia, a hardback encyclopedia. And he, did, he didn't just tag him in the head with it, he beat his head with it. This is my dad. Yeah. That's why he fucked up my ribs. Because that's just the kind of man he was. Show you a man. You know? And he had so much support. You know? And, and my mom did too. She had so much support. You know? And she could burn me in the oven. I'll show you the scar right now, but I don't feel like it. I'm kind of half dressed here, so I'm not going to bother. But maybe some other time. The issue is, is, you know, they had so much support. People knew what was going on. They could see the bruises, the welts, the marks, the fat lips, you know. I've got a picture taken with a friend of mine. You can see it if you want to. It's on my pictures. My friend's in, in his white shirt named Desiree. I call her Dizzy. And uh, we're both about, like, 14 years old. She's a little older than me, but I would have been about, I would have been about 14. She would have been 16. And we went to Kmart and we had these pictures done and those little picture things done. And the reason the reason I'm actually looking at the camera to the side like this is because I had a fucking shiner. It was a big, big shiner. Because my mom beat the shit out of me, you know. I used to go to her house and stay with her off and on because there was an intervention done actually by her parents. And, you know, I didn't want to be removed from my home. But they used to actually let me stay at their house, which was very nice of them. And I used to go and I'd look in the mirror and I'd look at and I'd have bruises on my shoulders and back. You know, my mom just beat the shit out of me. Just steady for, for, for quite a few years. I thought I hated her, you know. But actually all of my siblings, there were seven of us, we all loved my parents. The neighbors loved my parents. There was a few people that probably thought we were a little psychotic and didn't really care for us. but Because we were, we were actually the crazy ones on the block, the Smith family. Which was true. We were a very, very insane family. But... There were people that just loved my mom and just loved my dad, you know. And they are just horrified that I, this rotten little piece of shit, last little puny rotten little punk Smith kid, would open her mouth and say anything 
such as these statements about abuse. You know? I mean, how dare I come forward with the truth? How dare I share my mother's pain by showing the world that my dad raped her continually for years. Now, we're not talking about pleasurable sex. We're talking about rape. Forcing himself on her. Slapping her. Choking her. Why? Because he, he, he did it in front of me. So I witnessed it myself. But not only that, we knew this was going on in our house all the time. This is just this was just normal. This was the way it was. He had to keep an ear. Try to go try to protect my mom. All right. And all these people want to sit here and run me down for going public, you know, say, and, and saying what needed to be said. That I'm pretty sure that my dad sexually abused my brother Rob. I'm pretty sure it was him. And I don't have any proof of that. It's just the kind of stuff that was going on in my home. I saw what I saw. My brother was really messed up. My dad abused him horrifically, physically. That's, who, that's the one who got, he beat him up, and then he, my dad and mother were brought up on abuse charges. So, you know, then my brother rapes me at the age of eight. You know, eight to almost nine years old. You know, and people want to sit there and get mad at me because I'm coming out with the truth. I don't care. And like I said earlier, tough shit. You know, what was done to me was wrong. What was done to my siblings was wrong. What was done to my mother was wrong. Mm -hmm. And so for all these people that support abusers, shame on you. That's where the shame lies. Because you can't get past the potato salad and the cookies and the friendly smiles from my mom. Oh, how are you? Just love you. You can't get past that enough to see the truth. That's a shame. So the shame is on you, not on me. So my survivor friends, hang in there. Reach out and get some help. Do not suffer on your own. There's even anonymous groups, like I say on all my shows, because that's what I did, anonymous work. I actually got into anonymous survivor sites and got help that way because that's what I trusted. And it was great. Finally, somebody who knew what I was going through, somebody who knew... You know, groups of people that knew where I had, what I had been and suffered and what, where, what I had been through. I would tell you, please get help. Call a crisis line. Do whatever you have to do. You stick it out. You get help. You do not struggle and suffer on your own. Do not be destroyed by these abusers. You know, see, if we allow the abuse to destroy us, then our abusers win. Don't do it. Don't do it. Win this fight with me. Stick it out and get help and have a good life. Because every day that we wake up and we're good to ourselves and we're and we're on our healing journey, we're doing good, and we're not hurting ourselves, we're not hurting other people around us, and we're having a good life is a slap in our abuser's face. And it's also a slap in their supporters' faces. So take good care of yourselves, everybody. Till next time. Bye-bye.